करके मेरे साथ बाहर जाएंगे डिसिप्लिन ऑफ नॉट जंपिंग इमीडिएटली इन टू दिन I've always been like a very restless, enthusiastic sort of person. Like, no, no, not really. I'm not sporty, not in any way jumping, climbing types. Just curious, just okay. interested. My mum sort of put me in a lot of classes, and I've explored a lot of like drawing, painting, dancing, candle making, chocolate making, piano class, just pottery. Name it, I've done it, sort of thing. You know how to play the piano? Yeah, had that sort of creative sort of bent mind. That's the reason that I have explored a bunch of things that I have like drawing, piano, auto. uh or otherwise and even a lot of other things even sign up comedy actually it's just been by chance and because of this curiosity so and none of these by the way were like planned planned like i didn't think that oh this is what i'm going to do as a career just sort of happened because i was like oh let's try it and see you know so i yeah. worked out really well I mean, it's going well so far, I guess. So. Do you have a thought process before you get started with a particular shoot or a particular stand-up comedy? Like, how do you get into that phase? It depends on what shoot it is. I, of course, shoot above water as well, not oh, just yeah. under water. If it's a personal shoot, of course, it comes from maybe some idea that I had, or like a thought, or something that inspired me, maybe, or like a color scheme that inspired anything. If it's a client shoot, of course, you have to give the client what they want. Mm -hmm. your brain is ever off like you're always thinking so if i find something funny in this moment or like if i'm most of the times it happens when i'm traveling i'll notice something funny or silly yeah. and i like make a note of it and i'm like let me think if that can be a bit later i work on that thing of course and you try it out at like an open mic you bomb like 10000 times mm -hmm. and uh, then maybe something comes out of it how important is it for an artist to derive you have to be inspired by something right like anything could be inspiration a thought a person a color situation anything but there has to be some sort of a spark that like an idea something that sort of gets you in terms of inspiration for content i really look at my own personal life i am from a punjabi family so i really never really run out of content honestly because wow. there's just so much Happening, happening in the family all the time is so dramatic. But uh, like, if I'm going through a breakup, I'm gonna be talking about a breakup on stage and making fun of it. Otherwise, I talk a lot about my family as well. Like, my mom's a single parent, and I talk a lot about yes, that yes. on stage. You're not deriving inspiration from your personal life. Is there something else which you look out? Let's say you're not having a breakup. I'm just giving an example. No, no, of course, I'm not always having a breakup. It's like every time you have a breakup and you go on stage and <laughs> perform your video, let's come back. Be like, hey, I need to date someone else. So I can break up with them. So I don't. <laughs> Yeah, I I don't have material. Hey, but no, no, it's not like that. Especially if you're traveling alone, which I like to do as well, and um, just around daily, day to day, just being observant, end up like I mean, I end up finding a lot of. What is like the world of underwater photography? I learned underwater photography from Umid Mistry, who is, if I'm not mistaken, one of India's first few underwater photographers. Okay. At that time, when I was interested in it, I wasn't like a very good. swim or anything so mm. i had to obviously like brush up on my swimming and things like that mainly because i really enjoyed it so i did yeah. that i also did a dive course you have and to be certified as a diver to get into underwater photography or nothing like that i mean i think it's it's a good thing to know because i mean there's a lot of things that can go wrong and things yeah. like that so it be it's it's much better also then you're not confined to just a shooting in pools and things like that you can take it like there's a photographer in bangalore called anu anu okay. jk right. and um It's a brilliant underwater photographer. Him and this is another photographer called Bhushan. They're actually Bhushan Bagadia. Yes. Yeah. And they're actually really advanced divers, and they shoot when they go diving and stuff like that. So I think it doesn't limit you in a way. Like I don't actually shoot. I stick to shooting in pools and people as of now, at least. It's more of a controlled environment. Yeah. I yeah exactly. I prefer to shoot in a more controlled environment right now. But I think with their advanced diving skills, it gives them the freedom to sort of. explore that option as well which i'd love to at some point i think but uh, not right now i have been a photographer for a really long time because photography was doing pretty okay in its place i just decided to take a little bit of a break not not to see that i don't do it at all i wanted to diversify basically yeah and i wanted to kind of focus give comedy a little bit more focus because it was new okay. and so not to say that i'm never going to be a photographer again and not to say that i'm stopping photography forever but i wanted to sort of focus on comedy for For a bit, just give it that attention. And, uh, yeah, I'm gonna restart shooting like now in a couple of months. You have an underwater shoot, and the client has lied to you that we're not swimming. What do you do? 
I mean, you have a major distance from the where the client is and where you are, and they start drowning. I've shot people who don't know how to swim. Okay. I just how, how do they react? Get you just need water. people to not be scared of water. Okay. I, I mean, because a lot of times that I'm shooting, it's not water that's very deep. It can be if you're a swimmer that does make things a lot more easier. If you can just stand in the water, it's fine. Even if you don't, as long as you're not scared of water, obviously we take those precautions and don't like I'm not gonna throw you in the deep end if you don't know how to swim. Be like, nahi karna pare. As long as I mean, whatever the client is comfortable with. Obviously, if you're lying, then that's really dumb. How is the comedy scene in Bangalore? Because there's a lot of discussion that the comedy scene in Bangalore has developed a lot. It's first Mumbai and then Bangalore. That's how they compare it. You know, there are a lot of stand-up comedians who don't have content online. They don't really post. So when I had a conversation with one of the stand-up comedians, he said, "Takes years together to get content for you to put it up online so that you have a good audience over there." So what's your take on? But yes, it does take a long time to have a bit that's developed and gets to a stage where, in terms of the comedy scene in Bangalore, yes, it has evolved a lot. I think in Bombay, the comedy show started much earlier. But all I'm trying to say is that I think in general, comedy is something that's picked up. There are a lot of comics online. There are a lot of people watching comedy now. There are a lot of people who are looking at stand-up comedy as a viable entertainment option. There are a lot of people who are looking to like say, "Okay, okay, this is something that we'll buy a ticket and go watch." Just like how people go watch movies and things like that, so I think as the scene is developing, as an audience as well, we are developing and evolving. So now, when you talk to a lot of people and ask them, "Hey, who's your favorite comic?" They'll have a bunch of names that come out, and a lot of those names will also be comedians from India, not just you know like one odd name and comedians from abroad. It's a lot of comedians from India. Okay, so what do you do when a show does not work out for you? When you see someone getting offended, or probably even screaming, or maybe you're not getting the laughs that you had expected. One of the things is that you learn more from a bad show than you do from a good show, and it can be a lot of reasons. Maybe your timing was off, or maybe something in the content didn't work. It could be a lot of reasons, but obviously, it's good to like review it and see what didn't work, why it didn't work, things like that. and then get on so punya what would you like tell to those people who want to get into stand up comedy or underwater photography what are the tips or do you even want them to get in maybe in general photography i guess for stand up comedy i would say find an open mic that's closest to you and just try it like if you have a thought that you think that might be funny anything and with photography as well i would just say pick up a camera any camera it doesn't have to be an expensive camera it doesn't have to be like fancy equipment i would just say pick up any camera any and start camera that you can get and start that. taking pictures like i've seen a lot of people who just in terms of their in- instagram and taking pictures on their phone have really improved with photography just because of a random interest in photography they're doing other jobs but they're like randomly interested so i would just say that pick up any camera and like start taking pictures that's all So who is Pune Arora as a person? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. Shit, sorry. Man. Why? I don't know. You have that face, you know. I don't know. You made that expression, you know. I See, now you know why I became a stand-up comedian. I yeah. just this is what kept happening. People kept laughing at me, and I was like, "Yar, thode paise to banjaane chahiye."